we are here at Sips at Clay's. Uh, they're going to be manufacturing Plot 7, which is the first one to go up on site at Church Farm. And um, we're here at their manufacturing facility, which is in Skipton. And we're going to see how it's all made. So let's go have a look. Obviously, once everything is signed off 100% uh, from the design, they can then create a cutting package, um, which is basically all the plans broken out into the pieces that need to make up that house, which is kind of complicated in itself because it's not just like, well, I need a wall like this, but the wall is made up of components that have got different lengths, different widths, uh, a raking cut, an angled cut, and other sort of structural elements peppered in there as well. And we're going to show you um, the process as it happens in their manufacturing facility. Yeah, okay. I mean, that, that's operation number one, blank panel to that. So, Ian, from these trucks, you load all your panels you're going to be using. That's how they look when they first come in. The, the trick I might want to use is to have the right size panels for the right job. So we're just optimizing the panels. Um, so we're minimizing the waste. We can process the waste, but we, we you know, it's easy obviously cutting out the right size. So you load them in here. Bring them in to here. To this machine here. Onto the, onto the, uh, and that just makes it easy for them to load. Just avoid lifting big yeah. panels, yeah. Yeah, when they get up to seven and a half meters, they're quite, uh, they're quite heavy. This first machine is basically cutting it to length. Cross cut saw, cutting to length. Uh, they're all 1220 panels at this point. We then use the, the, uh, the rip saw here to rip the panel to the right, correct width. So these are the cutting drawings you were telling me about that you produce? Yeah. So from the 3D CAD model upstairs, it spits out these, you know, just simply panel drawings. Right. So every single panel then has its unique reference number um, and, and it becomes a big Lego kit. But the key is obviously getting it right upstairs, bringing it down here, and then the lads are just cutting to all these dimensions that you see here. Depending on the complexity of the panel, there's, there's obviously more and more dimensions, angles, etc. So first they'll they'll look at this and say, I need I need this panel here That's to correct. be this length. That's it. Yeah. So they'll cut it to there, and then obviously this has got an That's angle right. Cut. So so if it's a straightforward 1220 panel, it just comes straight through. Uh, as soon as anything narrower than 1220, you can see there's a 1220 panel. Here we have a, a 478 panel. So that will come off here. We'll cut it to the width on this saw here and then bring it off if we need to put the angle on. Oh, okay. Any quirky cuts, so it just comes off here and, and does a little quick bypass before it goes back so to you the basically, station. So basically, you've got panel, you've got cut to length, you've got cut to width, and then you've got special cut. Any special cut right. comes okay. off here. Ready, Mark? Yeah. It's okay, but it's, it splits like crazy out here. Yeah. Okay, cool.
Thanks for that, guys. All right, cheers, buddy. Have a good one. Yeah. And then it all goes through to the routing station through here. And this is where you're talking about this thing here, aren't you? You're talking about... The rebate. So the, the panels come into us with a, a 50 mil rebate on each side. As soon as we cut the panel, you can just see there, it's got a solid, solid foam core. So we need to rip out that 50 mil piece of foam there, which is where we use the, the router here, which is a, a converted spindle molder. Are you typically taking that out on all four sides? Yes, every so, single panel is always taken out on four on all four sides. So there's basically a, j a jointing piece between panels. Absolutely. Ah, okay. Yeah, on every right. single panel. What? Uh, so are the jointing pieces just something that comes standard, or do you have to make we, those? We send the jointing pieces out as a as a in a separate pack. Do you make them though? We make them. Right. So they're, they're okay. either it's a, one one. There's two different joints. One is a structural joint, which is a solid piece of timber, which we'll get to in a minute over here. Uh, the other one is what we call a spline joint, which is a thin piece of panel that goes into the uh, into the 50 mil rebate on the side of the panel. All right. Okay. So where, where we get a where we get an angle cut, for example, on the ridge, yeah. we would cut the bevel at whatever degree, and then we route out 50 mil foam on the angle with these purpose built. Um, angle grinders. So that 50 mil that's been rebated out there to, to form a, a parallelogram shape, we use these angle cutters. Oh wow. Is, is that a tool that's just applied to a standard? Uh, it is. This is that is, a this, nine inch grinder? This is nine inch grinder. This is our bespoke. This is, you know, bespoke to us. Really? Interesting. Um, oh wow. So we have five degree increments. So we have everything from sort of 10, 15 degrees up to 50 degrees. So you, you developed those? We developed those, that's a, that's a, um, a casting. Does anybody else use that now? Uh, no, no, we, <laughs> we haven't sold that on. Stop filming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a casting. So there's a bit of work in the getting the casting right, but it's, uh, yeah. What did the, how did that change things? For, uh, I mean, well, so I was, when I first saw that in Germany, it wasn't a casting, it was a welded bit of thing on, a, on, a, on, a, on an angle grinder and it really didn't look very safe at all. Fortunately, I had a, an engineer that used to work for me, um, a very old school engineer, and, and that was just right up the street, so he, he designed those. And how, how was it done before? Would you have to like, uh, we've it always out? done it like that. We've oh, always done it. Yeah, I mean, it. If, if we ever fail with those, it's, it's a it's a it's a nightmare to get out. It's, it's a wire brush. It's, it's not easy to yeah. to get a nice clean uh, a nice clean cut there. Kingsman only cut square panel. They never cut anything like that. They just but that just gives you a better finish. Oh yeah, so it's just a very neat, tidy way yeah. of going on. Oh, that's cool. when I you get hips that, and valleys, the, the, yeah. the, the, when they form inside, it just makes a very nice, clean line. Yeah, we're cool. not able to hack anything because it's so accurate. So yeah. as long as the sole plate is square and level to start with, we're, we're good to go. Uh, and those are finished roof panels ready to go. Um, all these here? Certainly those ones there, we've got an angle on, so they're all roof panels, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Are these columns as well as jointing pieces, or are they...? The, well, you're going to edit this, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't, worry about that. Don't worry about that. I might include that bit, though, because that's priceless. <laughs> so, the structural timbers, they come into it. We, we're cutting the structural timbers. Can we just go around here, actually? Can we just, it would be good to get this shot around here. Um, so all the structural timbers that go to site are pre-cut in, in a controlled environment in the factory. As you can see there, those are all the structural timbers these are a, a, a 108 by 100. We do go to a 140 and a 240, yeah. and then we'd go to a glue line beam, and then we go to a steel. So there's a bit of a hierarchy as to, yeah. as to so what So anything we use. above, what was the next size up from there? Uh, from one, 140, a, a 140 by 108. And anything above that is laminated. Well, it's a 240 by 108. Oh, okay. And then we go to a, a glue line beam. Right, which is basically just laminated wood. Is that, yeah. is that pressurized in heat? Or? Yes, yes. That's essentially. Uh, I can show you a sample now, actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah. These beams look as though they're a solid piece of wood. However, they're actually laminated wood. Several boards of lumber glued together to form one piece. When they get the, the side drawings on, on elevation TG08, it'll show a 2523 post that they'll just go and get out of the pile okay. and go and get it. 
So and that will that will be what's in between. That will go in between the panel. You'll never see it once yeah. it's built. But that, is that because there's another uh, something structural that's coming down at Above that point? It, yes. Right. And, okay. and wherever we get a door or a window, you'd, you'd always see one of those on each side. Right. So that forms the jams for the windows or the doors. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, the head is a. The head is a 240, or if it was a bigger head, it might be a glue lamb beam. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. And I noticed this here. So this is like a finger joint, right? It's this a finger is... joint. Uh, we're, we're buying the timber in 13 meter lengths um, from Germany. So we, it's, it's very straight. It's obviously not a 13 meter tree. Uh, we, we, so all the timber is finger joints. You say you get a nice clean length. We have minimal wastage, as you can see. And that, that's to keep so. it from twisting and moving and that Correct. kind of stuff, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so really? it's, it's very good quality yeah. timber. Because actually, I, you can just tell how, the, you yeah. know, how dense the rings yeah, are right. here. Yeah, it's yeah, slow yeah. growth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was wondering about the timber, yeah, because yeah. you couldn't really, the stuff you can buy in, you know, yeah. off the shelf yeah, right. yeah, yeah, at a hardware yeah, yeah. place is, uh, is, is not going to be So it, there's the minimal movement yeah. in it, yeah. 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 It's um, obviously, as it comes in, we, we, we moisture test the timber to check it's, you know, it's within the under 20% uh, right, moisture. Okay. Um, but you get it from Germany. We get it from Germany. So does it, nobody makes that locally? There's nothing it's in the UK, not no. no. Right. Um, but again, they're, they're used to building... A lot more houses and timber. Yeah, yeah, and they've got the forest in Germany, haven't they? Yeah, but it's, it's just the panel was originally made in Germany, so I suppose that's where right. it's, a, it's a funny sized timber uh, for the UK. Does Kingspan specify the timber that you need to be using? or? Uh, they, speci they, they specify the grade of timber. All right. So it's C24 timber. C24. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, which. Like the, the European kite mark and. So they, they don't produce any of that kind of stuff. No, not they, at all. No. But they just specify what needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of the BVA, uh, but C24 timber is the, is the standard. Yeah. Of course, you're doing the floors as well, aren't you? Which, which uh, that's we didn't great. really touch yeah. on. That's right, yeah. Uh, well, these are an, an, an eye joist, eye beam, yeah. various different brands out there. Um, we tend to use a, a, a German one again, just by coincidence, but it's a, a brand called Styco. So basically, you've got a laminated timber again here. A laminated top and bottom flange there. That is what. Uh, it's, it looks like hardboard, but it's not. It's, it's more. It's a very compressed, very uh, dense material. But all all of these components really are designed for minimal twist, maximum strength. Absolutely engineered, so there's yeah. no movement uh, whatsoever. I'm assuming you can um, also there's certain you cutouts build, you can make drink, into these. Build, and, yeah. Drill big holes um, through the centre of those, yeah, uh, for your MBHR systems. We're now glue lambs, and we're going to look at something. We're going to look other... at the. We're going to look at down the. Uh, um, you've obviously uh, those are the actual panels for the job we're talking about. All right, cool. But not not these on the right, but all those in front of you there. If you go to that back stack, you might be able to. You'll be able yeah. to see the plot. And then... Normally, it would have a name on, but that's why we just called it plot seven. Plot seven for pain in the ass. Why is it? So <laughs> <laughs> Pallet spelt wrong. Which is not good, is it, mate? <laughs> It looks a little bit of a mess in here, so do it if you can just try and keep the you know, don't <laughs> too much. Zoom in. It's just because I mean, there's lots going on in here, really. Um, these are the splines that we that we use, uh, and we use the the waste. We cut the we cut the the one four two panel. Mm -hmm. um, we cut it into hundred mil strips, and then we cut out the middle bit of foam and stick them back together again to make the jointing piece. So that just slots in, into the oh right, into, so into the yeah, panel so slightly narrower there. than yeah. that's what that's what I that's was a, saying. Yeah. When you've got OSB, OSB, yeah, in the insulation, then OSB yeah. again. Yeah. yeah, so that just slots into a panel. What fixing do you use for? For, for, for nailing, and it's all it's all um, it, people are familiar with puzzleload nail guns because we're using that many puzzleload nail guns. Um, sorry, because we're using that many puzzleload nails, we just use uh, an air compressor. The and 65 it, mil. Um, with a, a reasonable head on, yeah. 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 Um, and, and but there's a lot of nails. The bit, you know, there's a hell of a lot of nails goes into. A, there's yeah. every. If you imagine every single joint on both sides of the joint on two yeah, sides. Yeah. yeah. So you just. It's a full-time job. Up, up. Yeah. 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 So Sorry, screwing it would take a while. You don't want to hang over. <laughs> <laughs> this is unusual because these are 140 stud walls, internal stud walls. Uh -huh. um, Normally, we're, we're, we're using uh, those are yours as well, actually. They, they, that's usually we just use a normal 89mm stud, but there's obviously some serious loading to use a thicker uh, a wall panel. Yeah. Um, so, those, those are possibly still load bearing, though. They are, they are, they're definitely load bearing. Yeah, because you only yeah. do, we only basically, do you're only doing the load bearing. Yeah. 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 We'll come in and that's we'll right. put all the other partitions yeah. in. Yeah. Line 
Thank you. So that's that's what we call a spine joint. So the other piece goes so on top of that, that, and then you're fixing through here, and you're fixing that's through correct. there. Yeah. 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 And that's just to, to, to keep the continuity of the insulation. You've got the continuity of possible. the insulation going through that. The only time we change that is where we've got some structure where we use a solid yeah. piece of timber. But the, the beauty there is with it being timber is that it's less Exactly, um, exactly. Yeah. Less it's, it's minimal. Uh, and the, the um, thermal bridging, I should say. Yeah, the, um, the U-value calculation does take into account an element of timber. I think it's about 9%. Yeah. Um, that in any building you can have But as you say, timber's a, a pretty good conduct anyway. Right. So it's, uh, yeah. Are the glue lambs in here then? Uh, well, or there's not many? Well, no, oh, I see the wraps. Yeah, the wraps. There is. Yeah, yeah I don't need those. So that's glue lamb being made up. These come from Denmark. They're made up in, in different lamellas, um, compressed. And uh, Glue lamb? What does that stand for? Uh, glue laminated timber. Hey, Steve, how are you? Hi, Bob. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Isn't this amazing? Look at the size of these glue laminated beams you got up here. This is great. Pretty typical of uh, uh, in terms of size, right? Right. Well, yeah, we can make them eight feet deep and 130 feet long, right. but typically they go into residential applications. Yeah. So we're talking about a smaller size. And what are they used for? The supporting, the, big the supporting the roof and big openings. The other thing I was going to mention, because we touched a little bit in the first film on some of the, you know, people see this kind of stuff and they say, well, that's not very eco-friendly, you know, in terms of materials and stuff. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about how the OSB, obviously, it's using like 85% of the timber as opposed to stick-built timber. Yes, that's um, right, yeah, yeah. So it's, because it, that is actually a sort of waste, it, it's, it's almost yeah. a waste product. It's like a pulp, it's, it's, it's not pulp, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I know what you um, mean. Yeah. And this is apparently th th only 3% of it is a product, the rest of it is water. Um, is, is what I had read. Um, uh, yeah, soon was, a lot of that is air. Yeah, not water, sorry, yeah, air. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, water. Yeah. Change that to. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, I'm still saying. <laughs> you agreed with me. <laughs> agreed, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and then I'm looking around your site, and actually, you know, you're talking about how you're reusing scraps of yeah. things, you're reusing this, yeah. that, and the other. It seems like that's something you're focusing on is. Uh, minimizing waste. We're trying to minimize the waste. We're never going to get away with it completely. Uh, no. Sadly, the, the sawdust when we cut the panel does have an element of the, the foam with the sawdust, so it's very hard to separate it. Yeah. So, so there is an element of landfill. But there's um, not there's not a big massive a, dumpster no. sitting around. No, with, uh, compared tons to of waste. Uh, compared to traditional build, it should be significantly less, which is another. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, well, particularly when a lot of this stuff is used to build passive homes. And That's a lot right. of people interested yeah. in passive homes yeah, is yeah. because they want yeah. to be energy efficient, they want to Indeed. be, um, you know, kind to the environment and yeah. everything else. So, yeah, so um, the, um, you know, you might need one skip rather than five skips, you know, I'd like to yeah. think, using a, a SIPS product. Mm -hmm. yeah, anything that doesn't have the insulation can be recycled anyway. Correct, timber, yeah. So. But the beauty about the, the because we buy the blue line beams in from Denmark, they're all, uh, obviously apart from this sample here, um, they're all, they're, they come to site already cut with the angles on and everything. You can just see one. There's a corner element. Ah, can you just yeah. see that there? Yeah. yeah. Is that angled so for the roof? That would be a purlin yeah. for the roof, yeah. So it comes angled um, as well? It comes angled. So, so it you, comes... you told them the roof angles? Yeah, we'll tell them. Yeah, wow. yeah. Very impressive. So there's no waste at all when it comes out. There's a bit of wrapping, that's, that's the lot. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Um, that's really good. And obviously we will try and get those to site. It's not always possible, but in your case, it's obviously... Uh, and then here you've got simple. some steel with a, a plate. We do have to use steel, um, but we would always try and use a glue lamb beam before we use steel. Yeah. Um, your steel's due any time. But basically that, that, that came in all prepared with that plate on it. We've, the, with the steel's coming to us, so we bought the steel in and then we've added the timber to it. Right. Sometimes Just, we're packing out, it's when we're putting joists on. We yeah. pack the, the flange of the, the steel so we can get the hanger to sit tight. Right. Yeah. But again, it's done in a factory environment. So it's not so easy to do it here than it is. Well, you uh, can, well I mean, you can yeah. tell. You can yeah. tell how neat it is yeah. compared That's to right, yeah. on site. Yeah. Well, as you can see, they've got a fantastic operation. Uh, Ian Clay uh, runs a really tight ship over there. And I got to say, I'm super impressed walking around, seeing how they manufacture this stuff. They've got their processes down, which I think is the huge benefit in manufacturing something uh, off-site means you have so much control over 
what you're doing and the accuracy, transport, and everything else. And they do just an amazing job of it. You know, we're very lucky to have found them to, to partner with, and hopefully they're patient with us and it's our first time, and they know that, you know, we're, we're learning as we go, and it's something that they, you know, know like the back of their hand. Um, so I'm just hoping that we can continue to improve and make it easier for them as well. The more we can do in the factory, yeah. the, the easier life is full stop. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good stuff. Thank you, Robert. Thanks for yes. showing us around. Excellent. That's no really excellent. Sure. Yeah. Um, Pleasure. Look forward to, to uh, next time. Get we'll be on site. We'll yes. be on site <laughs> and it'll be going up. Yeah. And, oh, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll get things ready. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Get it onto the, uh, the, the start again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah.